All right, welcome back to another edition of Math 208. Today we're going to talk about multiplication and division strategies. We're mainly going to stick with whole numbers, and we'll talk about the rationals and um, integers later on as we continue through the course. But for the most part, I'm going to stick to whole numbers today. I may show you some examples of negative numbers just so you can kind of see where we're leading to later on or explain um, a topic a little bit better. So we'll start with multiplication. And we want to know what does actually multiplication mean? And multiplication is the simplification of addition. So if we're doing something like 3 times 5, it's the same thing as adding 5 3 times. So 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 15, but multiplication simplifies that. You say you got 3 5s or 15, which is not a big deal when it's just 3 times 5, but if it was um, 500 times 3, well, that's 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, on and out to 500 times there. So the simplification of addition is um, a little bit easier to do when you multiply instead of just adding a bunch of times. So multiplication, what does it mean? It's the simplification of addition. And so we're going to go through some different strategies of how we can multiply. The first is our traditional algorithm. So the traditional algorithm, probably the way you learned in school, um, was to write them vertically over each other like this. And we say 6 times 2 for doing 32 times 16. 6 times 2 is 12. Carry that 1. 6 times 3 is 18. 18 plus 1 is 19. We put a 0 in right here. And then we do 1 times 2, 1 times 3. And then we have to add, and we get um, 512. That's your traditional method. A lot of people say, well, that's the normal way. It's the way it's supposed to be done. But once again, as we've talked about in other videos, it's not always about the traditional algorithm. It, it really doesn't have a whole lot of use other than just getting your answer as far as a student understanding what we mean by multiplying. So our goal here is not just to create robots that know how to do an algorithm, but we want to create um, students that understand math topics or have a good number sense of what they mean when they're multiplying things. Because just teaching them to be robots just to get the answers, they're going to lack some understanding there they're going to need in higher level math courses. So same for you as you're learning this math, I want you to be able to express it in different algorithms, different ways, so you can show me that you have the number sense and that you can hopefully one day pass that number sense on to other students. So we're going to do the same thing, 32 times 16, but this time we're going to use the lattice method. So we've done the lattice method for addition. I think the lattice method for multiplication is pretty fun to do also. Um, first thing I'm going to do is take 32. I'm going to write it up top. Remember, because multiplication is commutative, it doesn't matter. I could write 16 up top and 32 down the side. I'm going to do 32 up top and 16 on the side like this. And so I've got a grid set up. I want to draw some diagonals. So that way we get that lattice look going on. And I like to extend the diagonal a little bit further out. It makes it easier to add up later on and get our answer. So there's my diagonals. And I'm going to put in here... Uh, just, just multiply these two numbers. And once again, just like with adding using the lattice method, it doesn't matter where you start. We can start with 3 times 1, and 3 times 1 is 3. We get 2 times 1, which is 2. 2 times 6, which is 12. And 3 times 6 is 18. And now we're going to add along the diagonal. So you get 2 right here. 11, and don't forget, we got to carry that 1. Still got to carry 1 uh, digits sometimes. And then we get 5 right here. So we end up with um, a 0 right there, but we're not going to include it. 5, 12, just like we had on the traditional algorithm. Now, does this bring out any more number sense than the traditional? Probably not, unless you introduce in your class a discussion of how come the lattice method works when you compare it to the traditional method. And once students start to compare, then they might be able to see or at least start thinking about the numbers and why they work and have a better number sense there. Now this also works if you're multiplying, say this were 320, you could set up a lattice multiplication like this. 
where you got 320 times 16 and you could do the same thing with this and let's see here we get 0 2 3 and then 18 12 and 0 again add up along the diagonals carry that 1 3 5 and you get 5120 and so notice this is a factor of 10 bigger than this one you could talk to your students if you showed them this and say um, how come this one is 5120 this one's 512 what was different between the two well, we multiply the top number by 10 so our answer here is going to be 10 times larger but all those things are good discussion points but this is basically just to show you what the lattice method is for multiplication. The next we have is the set model and this is a good one to start off students with. The set model we're going to once again have sets of numbers so we're going to do 3 times 5 so I got um, 3 sets of 5 so I chose hearts you can really use any physical object you know pennies counter chips or whatever else um, just because I've got hearts on the screen that's what I'm going to use so I'm going to make a set of five hearts here and I just use this ellipse right here if it'll come over and circle those in so if I get five of them to fit in here and I got three of those so I'm going to just write it out three times And so you can just draw dots when you're doing your homework if you want to show this method or whatever. And then now we can count up the hearts and say, hey, I've got three sets of five, so that equals 15. Likewise, you could also do five sets of three because remember, multiplication is commutative. So three times five is the same thing as five times three. So you could do the same thing to show it just by rearranging it. And then we'll group this and clone it over five times. So the bottom one here shows five times three or five groups of three. And then the top one shows three groups of five. The next, kind of similar to that, but it's more of a geometric um, look at multiplication, is the array model or area model where you could say, all right, I've got a 3 by 5 square or something. I'm going to put up a grid like this. So if I'm doing 3 by 5, let's see, let's move this up a little bit higher so you can see it better. Um, this is a 2 by 5. I want a 3 by 5. Let me change that. There we go. That's a 3 by 5 there. And usually this isn't really drawn to scale because you've got 1, 2, 3 wide here, 3 tall, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. How many total rectangles do you have here? You've got 15. You could count them up and show that 3 times 5 is 15 there using the area model. If we're showing on the number line, like 2 times 3, then we can start at 0 again and go out 3. That's one time we went out 3. Go out 3 one more time and we show that we're at 6. Once again, we can, because multiplication is commutative, we can switch it around and say, what about 3 times 2? We'd start at 0, go out to 2 once, go out 2 more, go out 2 more. And so I'm showing 3 groups of 2 right here is equal to 6. So the next method I'm going to go over with you, with you is the Egyptian method. And the Egyptians, you would use um, a form of multiplication that actually just involved doubling. And so if we go back to our example of 32 times 16, what I'm going to do is write it out like this, and I'm going to draw a line between the two numbers. And underneath the left number, I'm going to write the number 1. And I'm just going to keep doubling that until I get a number that would exceed this top number right here, 32. So I've got 1 doubled as 2. Double it again, you get 4, 8, 16, 
and then 32. Now if I double 32, I'll get a number bigger than 32. So I'm going to stop there. On the right hand column, I'm going to write the original number above it, 16. And for each number I got on the left column, I'm going to write a number down that's twice as big as the one before it. Like basically just doubling again. 16 doubled is 32. 32 doubled is 64. 128. 256. And then doubling this is 512. Now, to come up with the answer, you're going to look at the numbers on the left and find out which ones will add up to this top number right here. And in this particular case, you've got one that already equals that top number, 32. So this right here adds up to 32. And then we're going to add up the corresponding ones on the right, and that will give us our answer. So in this case, 32 is going to be, um, 32 times 16 is going to be 512. Now, once again, because addition, is, not addition, and multiplication is commutative, we could rewrite this as 16 times 32. And let's use the Egyptian method for multiplying that one out. So once again, on the left, we're going to write down 1 and start doubling it. 2, 4, 8, 16. And if I go any further, I'm going to exceed the original number 16. Write down 32 and double it. 64, 128, 256, and 512. And right here, we've got 16. It already adds up to 16, and so our answer is 512. Now, both of these examples um, don't really show you the whole method, so I'm going to come up with another example here for you to do. Let's do um, 25 times, let's do 8. So for 25 times 8, you can pause the video and see if you can at least set up these two columns. All right. So if you did that, you should have written a 1 right here, and just keep doubling it, 2, 4, 8, 16. And if I double 16, I'm going to get a number bigger than 25, so I'm going to stop there. And on the right side, I'm going to write down that original number 8 and start doubling it, 16, 32, 64, and 128. Now, this is a case where we, on the left side, we don't have a number that equals 25. So what we want to do is find what combinations of these numbers will add up to 25. So looking at this, I know that 8 plus 16 is 24. So I'm going to add the 8 and 16 and get 24. And if I add the 1, I'll get 25. So these three numbers add up to 25. Take the numbers next to them, 128. 64, and 8. Add those up, and you should get 200, which is what 25 times 8 is. So we can try one more out. Let's see. Let's move these off to the side. Let's do 7 times 12. Some smaller numbers here, but it should work out to be the same. We know 7 times 12 is 84, but let's see how it works out using the Egyptian method. So underneath the 7, I'm going to write a 1 and keep doubling that number until I get a number that would exceed 7. So 1, 2, 4, and I stop there. Underneath the 12, I'm going to write down a 12 and start doubling it. And so notice in this case, all three numbers add up to 7. I need all three there, so 1, 2, and 4. So I'm going to add up all three numbers on the right here, and I get 84, which is 7 times 12. Okay. So that's the Egyptian method for multiplication. We'll see here in a minute there's also one for division um, that works in a similar manner. Now we've got multiplication strategies using base 10 blocks. So we've got 15 times 3. And what we want to do is set up, um, in this case, 15 times 3, if you're going to do it, you're going to set out three blocks. So it's kind of like our set model, where we're going to have 15 sets of three. And then I'll go ahead and just put on a small ellipse around that. I want to write that out 15 times. So, And so, boom, there it is. We got 15 times 3, so I got 15 groups of 3, 
And so the next thing I need to do is regroup this to show my answer. It's not enough just to show um, 45 blocks right here drawn out in groups of three. So I know I got three, six, nine, and then if I add one more right here, I'll get 10. So as I'm doing this, I say, okay, right there is one rod. And then I'm going to group another set right here. So there's another rod and another rod. So I'm going to go and drag those down. And now I know I can probably get another one in here. Let's see. There's nine right there plus this one. Gives me another rod. So there's four. And then what am I left over with here? I've got four plus this one right here, which is five. So I got five little blocks left over. I need to bring those down. Um, so one, two, three, four, and then one more make five. So I can see that 15 times three is going to be 45. The next thing here we're talking about is division. So that kind of wraps up our multiplication and different strategies we can use with multiplication. Let's look at some division strategies. So first, division, what does it mean? And we said multiplication meant repeated addition or the simplification of addition. Division is kind of the opposite there. It means the repeated subtraction or the simplification of subtraction. So if I'm doing something like... Um, 20 divided by 4, it's how many times can I subtract 4 from 20? So 20 minus 4 gives me 16, minus 4 gives me 12, minus 4 gives me 8. I'm just going to move this up here. 8 minus 4 gives me 4, and then subtract another 4 there to get 0. So I go through and say, how many times did I subtract 4? And I subtracted it five times. So 20 divided by 4 is 5. So division is repeated subtraction. And that's going to be helpful to think about when we start going with what do we mean by dividing by a negative number. We are actually subtracting a negative there repeatedly. And so we'll look at that as we get into integers later on. So our first method we're going to look at here is the traditional algorithm. And so if I've got something like 364 divided by 7, remember a fraction is one way that we can show we want to divide. So I can rewrite this as 7 goes into 364 how many times? 7, goes into th uh, seven won't go into 3, so it would be 0 right here. But 7 will go into 36 5 times. 5 times 7 is 35, and I subtract that. I get one left over. I'm going to bring down that four. And seven will go into 14 twice. So 364 divided by seven is 52. Oh, that's all written wrong. 52. That's our traditional algorithm. And um, if you need more examples of that, I can give that to you. A lot of students, you know, haven't seen that in so long because they learned it in elementary school, and then when they get to middle school and high school, they basically just punch this in a calculator because they know the algorithm. It's just faster to do it on a calculator, and then after time, they forget it. And when I teach college pre-calc, we have to do this thing called, um, you know, synthetic division, and synthetic division follows a similar algorithm. But I always have to go back and teach my college pre-calc students long division so we can build up off of that. And it's amazing how much students forget, but, you know, it happens to all of us. So if you need more examples of that, let me know. We can go through some more. The next is going to be using um, base 10 blocks. So here I've got 33, and I want to divide it by th um, 3. So that's going to require 3 rods to, to represent 33 and three singles there. And so with that, what I want to do is divide those into groups. So I know I can divide the rods, this one's a pretty easy one, into three, and then each single block into three like this. And I can see that 33 divided into th thirds here, or into three parts, is going to be 11. Now it's not so easy to do when you've got something like um, Let's change the problem up here. Let's just get rid of that and say we have um, 
12 divided by 3. Not that this is a whole lot harder, it just requires a little bit more work. So here's 12, and I want to divide that into 3. Well, to divide that by 3, I have to break up the rod. So I'm going to make that now 10 of these. So let's do that. So I had this one rod, and what's written down below right here, there should be 10 red blocks plus the two originals. So that one disappears. So I've taken that one rod, broken it up into individual pieces, and now I have a total of 12 red blocks there. I'm going to divide that into groups, uh, or th three groups of four. We're going to end up saying it's four, but if you don't know the answer, that's why it's nice to have these manipulatives. Uh, remember, we've got that in the week one resources where you can cut out these base 10 blocks if you haven't already. Um, and I say, okay, I, there's this, this, and this. There's my three even groups there of four. So 12 divided by three is four. Same thing if you had this. Sometimes you've got to break up a flat into a bunch of rods, and you can do that as well as you show division in your work. So now we're going to do Egyptian division, which is a lot like Egyptian multiplication, the setup at least. We're going to draw a line underneath and then a line dividing the two right there. And I'm going to write a 1 underneath the number right here, 64, and keep doubling it until I get a number that is equal to, or I want to stop when it's going to be bigger than that. So if I doubled 4, I'm going to get 8, which is bigger than 4. It's okay if it's equal to it. I'm going to write this divisor here, 4, underneath, and double it, as long as it matches up the number of rows I have on the left. Now, on the left, I say what numbers will add up to the number 4. In this case, I already have 4 written out for me. And then I'm going to add the corresponding numbers there on the right. So in this case, it's 16. So 64 divided by 4 is 16. Once again, that's a pretty simple example. So let's look at something with a little bit more involvement to it. Let's try 696 divided by 29. So a little bit more involved on this one, or at least it's not as easy to answer just off the top of your head. So once again, I'm going to do the same method. I'm going to write one underneath, double, double, keep doubling it. Now, if I double the 16, I'm going to get a number bigger than 29. So I'm going to stop there. Then on the right side, I'm going to write 29 underneath and start doubling it. So 29 doubled is going to give me 58, 116, 232, and then 464. And so what I want now is what numbers on the right will add up to 696 there on the left. So looking at this, this comes out to be pretty fast for me. Um, if I add these two bottom ones right here, 232 and 464, they add up to 696. So this one and this one. And then on the left-hand side, I'm going to say, okay, add up the two corresponding numbers, 8 and 16, and I get 24. And so 24 is how many times 29 will go into 696. Um, a good way to kind of solidify why all this, why all this works is to multiply 24 and 29. What happens when we multiply those two numbers using the Egyptian method? So 24 times 29, how do we do that? So remember what we do. We're going to write a 1 underneath right here and keep doubling it. So 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32 is going to get us a larger number than 29. So we're going to stop there and then start doubling 29. So we get 29, we just copy the numbers over. And then on this, I'm going to look and say, hmm, what numbers on the left add up to 24? Well, it's going to be 8 and 16. And so the corresponding numbers with those, 232 and 464, are going to add to 696. And so we can see that 24 times 29 is 696. So looking at how to multiply using the Egyptian method and how to divide kind of gives some clue onto why it works um, and why we do um, each method a little bit different, but they're pretty close to being the same there. Next here, we're going to have the set model, which is very similar to our multiplication set. Let's see. Let's get something fun out here. 
um, I'll use daisies this time. So I've got nine daisies. And we're going to divide that into three groups there. So if I divide it up, it's basically like you're just circling them up into three groups. And it just so happens that each group has three to it. So that's, you know, very basic, but, you know, some, some students need that. And it's a good way to start off um, division. Our expanded model looks a lot like we're going to start off with the traditional method, but it's a little bit different here. What I'm going to do is pick a number and multiply it by 4 and then subtract that number from 587. So in this case, what pops into my head to start off with is 100. So I'm going to just write it right here, 100. What is 4 times 100? It's 400. So I'm going to subtract 400 from 587, and that gives me 187. And then we'll pick another number and multiply it by 4. Now, if I pick 100 again, I'm going to get a number larger than 187. And that's not going to help me out any. So I'm going to pick 25. So I'm just going to write out 25 over here on the side. 4 times 25 is 100. And I'm going to write that down right here and subtract it. I get 87. Next, I'm going to pick 20. So if I write out 20, 4 times 20 is 80 and subtract it. I get 7. And then I'm going to say, okay, um, well, I guess it's just 1 is all I got left over here. 4 times 1 is 4, and when I subtract that, I get 3. Now, 3 is less than 4. That's going to be our remainder there. We can't divide 3 um, by 4 and still get a whole number. Um, so if I add these up, I got 100 plus 25 plus 20 plus 1, and I end up with 146. And my remainder is 3. And this is kind of getting, this is a rational number here. So we're kind of moving away from whole numbers with this example. But I would say my remainder is 3. So it's still being divided by 4 right there. So what's 587 divided by 4? It's 146 and 3 fourths. Now, if we use the same method for, let's, let's try to find one that um, would give us a whole number. So that's if we had the remainder, and that's more for when we talk about rational numbers later on. So let's pick something like um, how many times will 5 go into 625? So once again, I'm going to start with the number 100, write it off to the side. 5 times 100 is 500, and subtract that. I get 125. And then let's suppose I'm just thinking, um, I don't know, the number 20. 5 times 20 is 100. Subtract that from it. I get 25. And then I'm going to pick the number 5 there. 5 times 5 is 25. Subtract it. You get 0. Add these numbers up, and I get 125. So 625 divided by 5 is 125. This is using our expanded model. It's very close to traditional, but remember traditional would look like this. 5 into 625. 5 goes into 6 once, 1 times 5 is 5, subtract, bring down the 2, 5 goes into that twice, multiply, subtract, bring down the 5, and then a 5 up there. So although they look similar, they are different methods. Here I'm just picking numbers that I can multiply and subtract from here, and then adding those numbers up to get my answer. So just another way it looks like traditional, but it's a little bit different there. One more thing I want to go over with um, before we end today's lesson, and that is um, partitive and quotative division. Um, multiplication doesn't really give us different answers in word problems as far as like the objects we're talking about. If I say I've got three bottles of water and then somebody gave me five times as much as that, I could say, okay, five times three is 15. I'm still talking about bottles of water. Um, if there are 100 people at a concert and then you multiply that by three because three times as many showed up now you got 300 people you start with people you end with people you start with water you end with water as far as word problems go with multiplication um, it doesn't really matter the order but with division you have different things going on here um, so let's take a look at what partitive division means Part of division means you know the number of groups and are trying to figure out how many are in each group. So, for example, if I have four children and 20 pieces of candy, 
how much candy does each child receive if I hand them out an equal amount? So here my answer, um, what are the units for my answer? Am I going to get, am I trying to figure out how many children or am I trying to figure out how much candy? So the answer there is going to have a unit that um, you got two units and you're reducing it to one unit, I guess you could say, in the problem. But the main thing I want you to know, because sometimes this can be a little confusing, is with partitive division, you know the number of groups and you're trying to figure out how many are in each group. So I've got a bunch of candy and I know I'm going to divide it into four groups because I have four children. And then so my um, answer there is going to be, what, five, right? Because you got 20 divided by four, five. But the question is, five what? Five children or five pieces of candy? It's going to be five pieces of candy because I'm dividing the candy into groups and I, and I want to know how much candy is going into each of those groups. So partitive, once again, you know the number of groups and you're trying to figure out how much goes into each group. Quotative is just the opposite. So think about what that means, just the opposite. Quotative, you don't know the number of groups, but you know how much goes into each group. Let's see that written out. Quotative, you know the number in each group, and you're trying to figure out how many groups you can make. So a possible problem you might see there is, let's suppose you're preparing relief packages for, I don't know, a disaster area or something, and each package gets six gallons of water. If you have 138 gallons of water, how many packages can you make? So in here we've got a known number of supply, and we're wanting to know um, if I put six in each group, um, how many can I make? So going back to our last example for partitive, maybe I know how much I want each kid to have. Let's say we've got um, a whole school of children, and I'm putting five pieces of candy in each bag. How many, you know, and they give me a total number of candy that I have. Um, here, let's, to, to avoid the confusion, let me just make up a new problem. Let's say we have 500 pieces of candy. Let's suppose we're preparing for Halloween. All right, I've got 500 pieces of candy in a big bag, and I'm going to put in these little sandwiches bags five pieces in each one. So how many... Um, packages can I make for trick-or-treaters coming to my house? So I could make a hundred, right? So I can make a hundred bags. So here I'm starting with a total amount. I know how much goes in each group and this tells me the number of groups I can make. So in this case this is quotative division because I'm figuring out how many groups. So when you're figuring out how many groups it's quotative and when you're figuring out how many go in each group like we did with the original one that's partitive. So there's an example of part of division. That's my made example on the spot there of quotative. And then our other quotative here where we're preparing for relief packages and we know that every family needs six gallons of water. So we can, uh, if we have 138 gallons, we can say 138 divided by six. I'm just doing the traditional algorithm here. It gives me 23. So I can make 23 relief packages or for 23 families there if each one gets six gallons of water. I don't know if that's a reasonable amount or not, I just made up that problem. Um, but for quotative division, that's, that's what we mean there, all right? So try over the homework, and if you have any questions, let me know, and we'll get you ready for that first quiz coming up at the end of the week. Um, thanks for watching, and once again, I hope you're enjoying this class. I hope you're learning a lot. Um, let me know any feedback you got so I can improve the course. And thanks for watching.